Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So where have all the bluefin gone? Well, I'll tell you, it was I, Jim Hutchinson from the Fisherman Magazine, who scattered the fish. On Friday, my friend Captain Dave DeGennaro of High Flyer out of Waretown, he said, come on, let's get in on this amazing bluefin bite. Met him at the dock on Saturday, went out to Ole's Lump, Resurrect, all of that, and just couldn't find the bite. And I heard the same thing from a lot of the fleet on Saturday, beautiful conditions for the most part. A little windy in the morning, but by the afternoon, laid down really nicely. The only thing that we did get on the way, way back Ballyhoo, was an undersized Mako that apparently didn't get the memo. If you want to get in on that action, the bluefin, scattered as it may be, they're in and out, those footballs. Pick up the June edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Great big bluefin on the cover. A couple of great articles, too. Captain John Raguso, Captain Tony Gatto, and even some location specifics from my friend Nick Honacheski. Overall, the, over, the offshore forecast from NOAA looks pretty good for this weekend. Um, so if you want to get your network going, share information, try to get some information from other folks. But if you share that information willingly, pays big dividends. The intel is definitely the way to go. Inshore, NOAA Weather Service out of Philly, which I often believe is about the best for forecasting the weather. Jersey Shore down to Lewis, Delaware, seems to indicate a whole lot of southerlies this weekend. I hate to say it, doldrums. It seems a little early to say something like that, but we are definitely in a transitional period. The, game, the uh, gambler just getting in after a half day trip. We'll check on what's going on there, but I'll tell you, as far as these boats that are sailing, the Raritan Bay bite, the striped bass bite has slowed down consider considerably over the weekend, though good fish are still popping up off the beaches of Monmouth County, Ocean County, Northern and Central. Uh, the folks of Parker Pete's out of Belmar, they said they were on some good fish, even Magic Hours trip on Sunday. They got in on some good striped bass and they believe that personal best striper action could continue for another week or two at least. And the bunker schools inshore making things interesting, of course. Uh, my friend Stephen Diogenio has been live lining outside of Barnegat for a bit of success in the last couple of weeks as well. Uh, back Barnegat down into Cape May County, the backwater is still producing some smaller fish, especially my friend Captain Alex Majewski said he never left his slip and still got some quiet time on the schoolie stripers out back in Barnegat Bay. The farther south you go into Atlantic and Cape May County, it's still mostly about the weak fish at this point. Mickey Krause checked in with the folks at Hands 2 Bait and Tackle on Friday with a seven pound weak fish kept for the table. Caught on jumbo bloods along the rock piles, one of several weakies he caught. And of course, down in Delaware Bay, that black drum bite that has been so phenomenal this spring is starting to dissipate a little bit. It's tapering off as those fish dispense to wherever it is those black drum go. Uh, I would expect a few more stragglers out along the beaches of Brigantine, maybe in back in Little Bay, Little Egg, and Great Bay as well. I did get an email from Richie Lombardi, who was out on Barnegat Bay this week when a school of about 50 or so huge fish showed up to where he and his wife were jigging for fluke. He uh, instantly grabbed one of the spinning outfits, threw an AVA 007, and hooked up to what looks to be about a 30 pound black drum. He said those, that school of black drum was in all over the, and all around the boat, so that's a good sign. I would, I would kind of advise you on that, no matter what kind of fishing you're doing, uh, you're deep dropping, you're jigging, you've got the conventionals, make sure you have a spinning outfit rigged and ready to go. Doesn't matter if you stumble into some black drum in the back bay, maybe it's a cobia hanging by the sea buoy, you could be offshore working for some of these black sea bass, for example, and find a Bonita Blitz someplace out there. Fluke action, of course, is on the upswing as things settle down for species like striped bass and black drum. Folks are getting in on the fluke bite. And of course, warming temperatures are starting to prompt that bite to improve just a little bit as well. I heard from uh, Johnny Linguini, who uh, came up big on the morning trip aboard Captain Mike's high roller on Monday morning. And then Matty Fish, he let me know he switched over from jumbo bass to fluke on the rare in this past week, boxed up a limit with Colleen Shea using team high hook jigs tipped with eight inch bunker strips, his official fluke opener for the season. So definitely think about those bunker as well. If you get into some bunker, put some in the box. Fresh bunker is great for, uh, for those fluke. Don't forget our 10 fish bag limit on black sea bass runs only for a few more days folks coming off the boat here, the gambler, that's what they're looking for until June 22nd. And uh, as of July 1st, we get a very minuscule two fish bag limit on black sea bass in New Jersey. We don't get that sea bass season back again until sometime in October. But again, get on it now. 
let's we're gonna we're gonna check in with Bobby Bogan and the gambler in just a minute. First, let's go uh, out to the Poconos, get an update with my friend George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, just out here working on the kayak a little bit with those uh, relentless spring winds starting to diminish, I figured I'd get this thing ready to put in the water. You know, there's nothing like getting up close and personal with a couple of those early morning stripers from a kayak. But the fishing all over has been really great. Kind of things, uh, I hate to say it, but getting back to normal. You know, a lot of folks out in the water, there's a lot of fish being caught. It's a really great fish, too. I want to share a couple of these with you. Um, Jen Wong was up in the New Jersey lakes, and he's getting into some nice white perch and believe it or not he's hitting them up on some uh, lipless crankbaits not even live bait so Jen great job there buddy keep them things coming also David Getz was out on his uh, on his kayak got himself a nice 18 and a half inch bass you can see he's been throwing those frogs and being really successful that's a really beastie little bass there uh, David good luck with that one Ryan Sturgis uh, was up actually fishing some uh, his spot is secret he said but he says they were hitting a black and silver yum dinger so you know the bass are getting into that post-spawn stage they're starting to drop off a little bit deeper now so uh, those slow deep presentations are starting to really work and produce some nice bass now Dennis Pitcher was out on the Delaware River down by Bucks County and he's still getting as a nice striper I think this picture was about a week or so ago but you're still getting those nice stripers on the Delaware don't forget to get on them as well uh, also up here in the lakes pretty much all over the place that panfish bite is really going strong uh, Eric Goodstall was getting us some really huge slack uh, bluegills here you know a couple of them make for a really great fish fry don't discount the panfish okay uh, also John Schnitzer was up in a uh, New, New Jersey Lake uh, getting some beautiful musky uh, John this is a great little catch uh, I know it's getting a little late uh, we gotta watch the water temperature with those musky especially if we're going to release them but all over guys the fishing's doing real well be sure you get out and get on them from Pennsylvania I'm George your Pocono Outdoors guy you know, if you're a hardcore kayak angler like, uh, well, like Pocono George, you can, of course, get in on the Fisherman Magazine's Coastal Kayak Clash. That tournament is going on now. It's free to enter. You can get all the details over at thefisherman.com. Last week, I laid out a challenge to New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware anglers to get in on the action. Well, New Jersey's uh, Mark Westcott, he accepted the challenge, came in with a fluke and bluefish. Regrettably, it just wasn't enough to get on the board, but somebody's got to. You guys have got to do this. I'm sick of it. Red Sox, Patriots, Bruins, Celtics. The New Englanders think they can just sweep in here, but we need to take it. We need to get in on the action, the Coastal Kayak Clash. and clash. Register first at thefisherman.com and pedal, paddle your way into a brand new kayak in 2020. Let's sit down with Captain Bob Bogan, talk about the latest announcement that the party boats in New Jersey can sail with more than 25 passengers. So let's talk a little bit about how you can do that in a socially distant fashion. Well, right now with the restrictions, we're, we're allowing 30. And uh, we have it figured the boat has two sides, 76 feet on deck, um, plus the stern is 25 feet wide. And at six feet, we came out with 30, 30 passengers. We're just putting a, a marker, a tape every six feet. We're requiring anglers to bring face covering down. And uh, we're just for ourselves, that, that's the only thing we're asking for customers. And we're suggesting that they bring food down because we're not serving food in our galley right now. Um, so we're telling them bring lunch. Uh, so uh, that's, that's one of the different things that we're doing. The, they've got the, the sharing of equipment. I guess if, if you're in a family unit, you can share, but you know, how do you, are you dealing with rentals, boat rentals? Yeah, and, and like usually the person that rents a rod, you know, will get this rod and it goes in that rod holder. So uh, we don't have a problem with people like, you know, sharing it. And at the end of the day, we just clean everything off, disinfect the rod and reel, and it's good to go for the next day. It seems like people are not going as far from home so we're getting we're in a tri-state area so we're getting from people from pennsylvania we're getting people from the new york area and you know from trenton and every place else so it is something for them to do where they don't have to go far what are you looking at for uh obviously we we end with our june 22nd sea bass i'm not going to pick up that two fish bycatch for a while what yeah are you, what are you looking at the next couple of weeks well this boat particularly has been trying to catch fluke or we're trying to catch fluke, but the fluking has been very slow so far. Um, we're finding some fluke, but they're really small, the, the ones we're catching, and we think that the water's a little cold yet. 
thankfully we have been able to drift in areas where fluke and sea bass would usually reside together so the sea bass are helping out with the catch a lot and we're catching some red hake to go along with them too so they're helping most days they're helping to fill the coolers what do you think look at a prediction do you think we'll get a night bluefish fishery again this summer i don't know about this summer we're kind of calling it night fishing now and we're going out to a place where we have a lot of different kinds of species we're going to an offshore reef about 15 20 miles out we're catching uh, red hake we're catching sea bass sometimes flounder um, and we're getting a, starting to see a few bluefish smaller bluefish which are the better eating kind and we're seeing some squid uh, that's a new thing that last few years that people have been getting into uh, bringing out a squid jig with a squid rod and catching squid right underneath the lights it's really cool Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious anglers choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.